Welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 24. Who's hitting what pitches? I'm Michael Wespe, your host. First of all, thank you for the feedback to the Interleague Update Report last week. I think that both Aza and Zeman hit the nail on the head by simply stating that the Pacific League may just be that much better in regards to talent and management. Anecdotal evidence such as Hiroshima's and Yokohama's ineptitude the past several seasons or the near dominance of the Pacific League teams in the Japan series has me convinced. But, you know, I still want to quantify it somehow. Nonetheless, thank you again for the feedback. Also in the comments on JapaneseBaseball.com was a suggestion by Johnny Gibson for a report on who has the highest batting average for a given pitch type, or the most home runs. That does sound like it would make a very good, interesting study. Let's see what we've got. Before looking in on individual players, I wanted a summary of what was happening with different pitches. So I created this giant chart of results by pitch to see what was happening. Outs in the air or on the ground were grouped together here. Singles, doubles, triples, and home runs were grouped together here. Striking out swinging or on a called third strike are here. And, you know, let's just break these groups down by result. Now that's better. We have hits, outs on balls in play, strikeouts, etc. All summed up and easy to see. I then created a summary table of all of these tables here to better see what was really going on with each pitch. Also of critical importance was something to verify the data and seeing the league batting average at 255, hmm, you know, that sounds reasonable enough. So, I sorted the pitch summary table by the frequency of each pitch, then went back and sorted the individual play tables the same. This told me something interesting about the fork ball. Now please notice that the fork ball is the third most frequently deciding pitch overall. But when we look at hits, outs in play, and almost any other category, it's well below shoot and even often change up, except for strikeouts. After fastballs and sliders, due to their sheer overall quantity, the fork ball decides a strikeout far and away above these other pitches. Despite the frequency, it's clearly a hard pitch to put into play. But let's see how individuals deal with the forkball and other pitches. Player summaries have already been categorized by pitch type. With all of the players tucked into pitches, the left half looks a lot like our second overall summary table. But I'm curious, is anyone hitting the fork ball out? Open up fork balls. Sort in descending order by home runs, and Oryx's Yoshio Itoi and Yokohama's Tony Blanco have each hit two home runs on fork balls. Fastballs are clearly the most, though. So, who's been hitting fastballs out? Why, Yakult's Vladimir Ballantin has, leading the pack with 12. Blanco has only hit 6 of his league-leading 22 out via the fastball. Is that because nobody will feed him fastballs? To answer that question... Let's filter just Tony's records out. Well, he's gotten a fastball 100 times out of his, oh, somewhere around 230 plate appearances so far. Six home runs were fastballs, five were sliders, 
and six were shoots. That's 17 of his 22 home runs pretty evenly distributed across these three pitch types. Considering that he's received half as many sliders as fastballs and half that of shooters, I think that pitchers might want to try to avoid those pitches a little more. I mean, look! He's 11 for 25 against the shoot pitch, six of those going over the fence, while only striking out once. He's even hitting the slider better than the fastball. Oh, I do hope none of the teams are watching this. If you are, ne ne, Blanco ni shuto nagete kudasai. Blanco has even hit two of the league's 18 forkball home runs, going 8 for 15 against the fork. Okay, so who are the top batters for each pitch type? Let's clear the filter and sort by average. Right away I see a problem. There are a lot of people with just a couple of at-bats with the same number of hits. Let's filter out anybody with, say, uh, less than 10 plate appearances. Here we are. Matt Merton is really hitting well against the fastball. Hiroshima's Tomohiro Abe, in limited time, has hit well too. Then there's Tadahito Iguchi and Hector Luna, both amongst the league leaders in hitting, and that thanks a great deal to the fastball. Yokohama's Keijiro Matsumoto hits the slider well, as do several others in limited at-bats, but it's SoftBank's Nobuhiro Matsuda who has really gotten a lot out of hitting sliders. Considering that Matsuda is hitting 263 on the year, it might be a good tactic to avoid that pitch to him. Fork balls, as mentioned earlier, are primarily used to strike batters out. So to see Chunichi's Motonobu Tanishige, Yokohama's Tony Blanco, and SoftBank's Seichi Uchikawa hitting over 500 with the pitch, each with at least one home run, they really stand out. And hey, you know, they're all current or former Bay Stars. What's with that? Anyway, what's more, each has struck out on the pitch less than 25% of the forks they've received as a deciding pitch. The shooter appears to be the most liked pitch by batters overall. Nine players with at least 10 plate appearances facing it are hitting 500 or above. After Blanco's six home runs against the shoot, though, the next highest is Itoi and the Giants' Hisayoshi Chono with two apiece. Curveballs aren't fooling Chunichi's Luna at all, nor Oryx's Hikaru Ito, or Nippon Ham's Sho Nakata either. Lote's Katsuya Kakunaka has been having his way with the changeup, as has Luna again. I'm surprised his average has dropped below 400 with how many times he's showing up in this list as one of the top hitters here. Let's take a quick look at Luna, shall we? It looks like the slider and forkball are his Achilles heel, but he's really hitting everything else well. Now I could go on like this for hours, but rather than do that, I've made a player summary spreadsheet available on Google Drive. It's linked to in the video notes on both Google Plus and JapaneseBaseball.com. And just so you know, there are pitches and plays missing in this data. And my experience with this data is that 
not necessarily all of the pitches are called correctly. That makes this data set good for spotting trends where there are a lot of data points, but not something you necessarily want to base an entire article, let's say, on a single specific number. Basically, apply critical thinking before stating anything as a fact based on this data set. But with that warning out of the way, please play with this data set yourself. And I'd really like to hear what kind of interesting things you find in the data. And now it's time for the pocket calendar. Interleague moves back to Pacific League venues this week, where hopefully Yokohama Bay Stars will have a better chance of winning since they seem to have an unusually hard time winning at home. And... This week's Japan Baseball Weekly podcast will feature an interview with Micah Hoffpower of the Fighters, Rookie Otani as an all-star, and a look at the standings. Please tune in. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaki Report. Thank you for joining me. Please feel free to leave a comment on either the Google Plus Pro Yaki community or on my Bayside West Yokohama blog, at JapaneseBaseball.com. Until next week, take care.